Okay, y'all, so we're back with two. part two. So he's gonna be asking me questions, like I said in the previous video. So I'm gonna be the one answering the questions while he be giving me yeah, all them tricky least, questions. So, um, what was your first impression? Like, the first Ghanaian you met, like, how was it like? How was your experience like? The first Ghanaian I met was a taxi driver and he was super nice. And I still, up to now, I still have his number, but the funny thing is, it's not going through, but I refuse to delete the number from my phone. Yeah. So, how, in what ways was he nice to you? He was understanding, like, even if he was doing something and we needed to go somewhere, he would drop it and then he would come to pick us up. He was jovial. He was understanding, knowing that we we're from somewhere else, and we needed someone to take us around. So yeah, that was the first typical Ghanaian I met. That was and that's nice. what we did. Ghanaians very proud, as you can see. Definitely. She can testify for that. Yeah. And even the immigration officers were nice to me. Really? When I came back to school, I came alone. So when I went to the place, I didn't know where the form was. So I was just standing like lost. And then the guy was like, because I filled in another form. Actually, when we were going back, my mom told me like, take a form, fill it in so that when you go back, you won't have to fill classes. And then if you're watching this video, yes, I lost my form that day. <laughs> so I had to like take a did new you, form. Did you find your form? The form, yeah. When I came here, I was in my suitcase. <laughs> there you see. But then the immigration officer was nice. They didn't keep me long. I told them I was here for school. They didn't even like check my bag as compared to the way people will tell you open your bag, remove mm -hmm. every single stuff. No, they just put it through the machine and then they told me to go. Because I think I got here, I was kind of late. Okay. It was in the middle of the night, so they didn't bother me that much. That's cool. So you said the food um, with that's in your country is similar, similar yeah, similar yeah. As well. but what are the new type of foods you tasted here how did you like how did you like, honest review tosafi mm -hmm. i don't like it people say it's nice yeah, but then the first tosafi i ever had it left a bad impression on me okay so <laughs> um i think that is because you see it has to do with who cooks the food as well yeah, yeah. so maybe the person you get <laughs> from me cooking they well. Cook it well i must admit so since then every time i see tosafi i'm like it's not tasty Lasting impression. yeah uh, so you see there is this argument it's usually between nigeria and um, ghana mm. about do you guys have jollof of course we do we just want the jollof competition don't come at me yes i will have the best jollof this year <laughs> to yourself so You've tested be best of um, your country and best of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Jollof, which do you think stands out? Of course, I'll tell you. I'm, of course, I'll tell you my country. I'm just. I'm telling you right now. No, we just don't, don't want... say. Don't say your country. Like we, what you've tasted. See, okay. What I'm gonna say about Ghanaian Jollof first things first is that Ghanaians are creative with their Jollof, right? They don't have to put a lot of things in your Jollof to make a Jollof. But what actually makes it your love is not to have separate stew and a rice. Mm, okay. You have to combine everything mm. to turn it into a jollof. Yeah. And I've seen a couple of Ghanaians who have cooked jollof. It's tasty. I'm not going to deny the fact that it's tasty. But then, like, they would separate the stew from the rice. So that doesn't, for me, I would say it doesn't count as jollof because the rice itself has to be covered in the sauce mm. that you're making to turn it into a jollof so your food are tasty but then it's not tasty as much as my country's jollof really? so when i say y'all are creative really? your jollof be empty though so i respect your fried rice i will be oh, honest so you guys have fried rice yes too. it's like you put everything in the rice sausage meat beef it depends on what ingredients you want to put in the rice and then sometimes some people will put um curry powder or turmeric powder to make the rice yellow and then sometimes some people will leave it as plain so our jollof is like loaded with fish meats we don't put fish in our jollof 
You guys are like fish. No, we we'll eat fish, but we feel like fish is not for jollof. Okay. So we put meat, we put sausage, we put beef, wow. we put vegetables. We use mixed vegetables, and then sometimes we use like fresh produce, so fresh vegetables. Put one it in there. plate of jollof. You have make, all those things. Yes. In. That's why we mix it together and the ingredients be like, yes, yes, yes if I eat, I'm full <laughs> type, <laughs> type stuff. That's why I say you people are creative because you don't put much in the jollof and stuff like that. So yes. I was surprised when I came to Ghana and I saw people like putting fish in jollof. I'm just like, huh? That's yeah, new. I'll try this nice. You should try it. I have eaten it. So tell me you don't like it. <laughs> It's nice, but I don't like it as compared to my country's jollof. Oh, she's just being biased. I'm not being. I knew y'all were gonna say biased. <laughs> <laughs> she has to support the country. Yeah, it's it's normal. It's... I knew you people were gonna say I'm being biased. Um, I wanted to ask you about leaving area like space, but then <laughs> I just remembered, and I'm like, nah. I will answer that question. <laughs> Living in Ghana depend. It depends, though. If you want to be cheap, you're going to have difficulties, mm -hmm. to be honest. If you want to be cheap, you're going to have a lot of difficulties. And it depends on the neighborhood who you're going to. Because, like, people in rich communities, what you are pay for as a decent house in a middle-class community, it won't be a decent house at where the rich people stay. Because it will be like you're living in some sort of shack. And then paying that huge amount of money. Yeah, true. If you go to a middle class place, you pay that money, you will get a very decent place for that cash and you pay for something less in the rich people's place. So if you wanna live a rich life, save up. Save up. If you wanna live a middle class life, have money for a middle class life. It just all depends. But then Ghanaian landlords though, my first experience, yeah, bad impression. <laughs> bad impression. <laughs> so um if you ask your rates the cost of living here mm -hmm. and that of your country like on a scale of one to ten i can't i can't read it the reason why i can't read it is because when i was in my country i was staying with my parents okay, okay. so i don't know what they were doing how much they were spending the only thing i used to do was collect allowance mm -hmm. and go to school but then here it's like i'm doing a lot of things by myself and then i'm experiencing a lot of things so I can't really make the comparison for that. Okay, final question. What are your hobbies? I'm Jack. I'm Jack with all trade. No, you can't be Jack with all trade. I'm serious. I do handy work. Mm -hmm. I love to put holes in walls. <laughs> <laughs> you love to put holes, holes in, in walls. walls. I have a drilling machine. Every single Saturday, I'm trying to drill a wall to put something on my wall. Really? And then a few seconds, it's like I can't sit still. If I'm sitting in one place without doing things that I like, I get bored easily. I can stay with myself. I can live with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm introverted, actually. But then, like, I love to sing, but I can't sing. <laughs> she has a nice voice, though. I'm try Have you heard me sing before? <laughs> Can I try? Can I try for you? No, I'm not doing that. Oh, are, you, are, you trying to, are you trying to embarrass myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I used to dance. I still like dancing, but I don't think I have that skill as compared to before. Mm -hmm. I would love to learn guitar again because when I was growing up, I used to learn from someone in my community, but then it wasn't top notch. So I would like to learn a guitar again or play any other instrument. And then... I love sewing. I told you I'm a jungle entree. Mm -hmm. I love, sometimes I'm doing computer science, right? I get bored with coding, but then when I start to code, I don't want to leave it until I complete. I like reading, obviously. I like to not go places. I like lying down on my bed and then staring at my ceiling. That's a hobby. Mm -hmm. I love to cook. Surprisingly, if my mom is watching this, she will say she's shocked. Because I never used to like cooking. I never used to be around people when you're cooking when I was growing up. But then now, it's like a thing for me. Yeah. I love yeah, it looks like to cook. You were forced to love <laughs> to cook. Yeah. Because you're by yourself, so you have to cook. 
No, but then like I can actually cook, but then I just never had interest yeah, in cooking. Yeah, because mom was there cooking then. Wow. Yeah, if they call me outside, I'd be like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> well, I'm doing something else. But then I just like anything that I have to do with creativity, I'm there. So you say you're a jack of all actually, these things you've mentioned. Yeah. Which one are you actually master of? Master of? Mm -hmm. um, I would say editing doing photography and videography i will call myself someone who is advanced in that specific place that's great <laughs> so it was good interviewing it's okay. you imagine on my channel on your own, <laughs> your own, <laughs> on your own channel that's great so so this is for... this is my colleague slash friend exactly colleague slash Oh, the great, <laughs> the, I'm not cutting that part off. No, you have to cut it off. I will leave, I will leave it there so you, you get embarrassed yourself. Yeah, you have to cut it off. <laughs> you have to cut it off. This is my colleague slash friend, the great J Brightness. If you hear the word J Brightness anywhere, just know that the guy is Jay there. J Brightness. Just know that the guy is there. But smooth flow. She, she's um, adding a little bit. Which is the girl? Okay, well. I'm, add, I'm hyping you up. Bro. You got a problem with being hyped. <laughs> <laughs> I like to stay modest. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. This is embarrassing. <laughs> ha! The boy and the way the boy talk about relationships in the group chat. Hey. I'm like. What? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> you have to cut this up. part too. I'm leaving this part here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to cut this part. I give up. The guy can discuss relationship as if he's a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking about being modest here. Uh. Uh. Alright you guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank and you thanks guys so to J Brightness for being here. You're gonna see more of them lately because I decide to actually be vlogging at work now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thanks for um, Samita for having me here too as well. Okay, I will then. leave his Instagram handle in the description and also on this video so that you can go and check the great out or check his work out. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. Stay true to yourself and peace. Peace out. Peace out. We, we peace are out. Peace out. I do that cooking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>